your point is an elephant. Her, we love her. She's adorable. At first glance, this place was actually pretty nice. It does have some pluses. This is really cute right here. It's a really cool little setup. Anyway, no handles on the furniture. Getting these drawers out is next to impossible. It's very spacious. That was nice. Um, and it was real clean. It was real clean and spacious. But it's got some really flaky problems. Like I say, the handles, the bed frames, bed stands are really flaky. It makes the beds really high. I don't know, I guess it was all right. This. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't all right. That's the hardest bed on earth. My back is killing me. I didn't sleep at all. And just a little thin, flimsy blanket, no down. I froze to death. Okay. That is not all right at all. Speaking of freezing to death, okay, so the bed really sucked altogether, which is why you stayed a place. The heater. The pilot light would not stay lit. I'd light it, and when it uh, when it turned itself off, it would blow the pilot light out. I had lit that thing five times, and it's still cold as hell in it. This couch, it's a cool design, and it would be comfortable if it wasn't all broke down and old. You have a fridge and a microwave, that was awesome. Not much amenities when it comes to the bathroom. There's really no storage in here. Uh, they did give you some hair products and stuff. Uh, what do we used to have in here? No blow dryer. Uh, whatever this flaky little thing is, I have no idea. No curtains in here. It was really cold in here. No um, iron or ironing board, and we use that like at every hotel. I mean, look at this. It's missing hooks on the curtains. And what is this design stuff here? This looks like. I don't know, country, something funky. That should be like some beautiful wood trim or something. Uh, you do have the full length mirrors and a good sized closet. That was pretty cool. So lots of space. We didn't even use the TV. I assume it worked okay. It's kind of small. But for as, you can only see it from this side. As bed. big as the room is, yeah, it's kind of a small TV. So yeah, we're probably not going to rate this very high. We're not. There were a few things that were really nice about it. It was spacious, it, it was, was clean. clean. So they'll get a three instead of a two. We're driving around. We're looking for the dispensary. Gonna get me some Mendocino weed but just a little bit to get me by so we can get humble. That one there, that herb and legend. Seeing more and more of these little islands out here as we head north. They're out in the water. And when the waves come up, boy, it looks so violent crashing against these rocks and these little islands. So we are stopped, stopped at some, I don't know, construction thing. We're just waiting on the flag, man. This is our third stop. <laughs> This one's kind of With scary. No yeah, no view. Okay, I guess we're going. I'm scared. This is more windy than anything we saw on the coast. Beautiful. And you talk about how we're going in and out of the light thick, and dark. Thick woods, dark and deep. It's not too bad here at noon time. But in the evenings, this is really extreme. When you go in through the light and dark, boy, you hit that dark and you can't see a damn thing. And then the light hits your eyes and you're blinded by the light for a second. It gets really intense. There's a cute little river. 
the South Fork Eel River. And then here's this awesome bridge. We're going for the drive through tree road. Here we go. out in that field being all wild and turkeyish. We found it odd or kind of interesting anyway. When you were cruising along the coastline, it felt a comfortable 70 or so, and it just felt wonderful. And then when you cruise back into the forest, just a mile or two, suddenly it would get hot. It was like 90s. It seemed just kind of odd, the extremity in such a short distance from the coastline into the trees. Sometimes that brings on that hot pine smell though, and that smells really good. over for a rest stop. We're going to take five here. Uh, Don says this whole Burlwood stuff looks like a moose head. Oh, Indiana duck. Yeah. the end of the Avenue of the Giants. Now we're back on the freeway. Let's see how far we got to go to Eureka now. <laughs> okay, here we are in Eureka. Back at a Best Western again. This one's really pretty. 
It's the Best Western Plus Humboldt Bay. All right, feather. Ah, life's good again. Okay, this fancy closet. And then the bathroom. And this light does all kinds of things. It does a night light, it does heat. Another huge shower phone in the bathroom. Okay, lots of full length mirrors. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Uh-uh. The glasses are glass. And there's like a little living room. <laughs> okay. That's pretty nice. Eureka cost breakdown. Fuel, $22.26. Food, $95.53. This was made up of a couple different things. You saw us go out to coffee in the morning. And then there was a grocery store. We had some sort of picnic for lunch. And then we had a really nice Italian restaurant for dinner. But of course, we ate it out of styrofoam because everything is shut down still. Um, lodging. 225.13. The I know that's kind of steep for a hotel, but it was a really nice Best Western. And after the previous night being so bad, it was just such a relief. They have good beds, a really nice bath in the morning. So it was worth it. Step 4281. It cost $10 to drive through the tree, and then, of course, I had to get souvenirs for the grandchildren. Total, $385.73 for the day. Kind of an expensive day. The trip total just cleared $2,000, so we're at $21.80.85. So we're still averaging just a little over $300 a day.